We're going to be testing several different bolts and we have three bolts here that you're going to be issued per group. They have different markings on the end and the first thing we need to do is cut them to a length that can fit into our fixture. So if I take this bolt and I set it up here, I want it to be in single shear right here in this one plate right here. So what am I looking at? If I put my fastener in there, I want it to go through, but not through this piece, just through here so that when we bring that down, it's gonna cut that fastener right there. So how do we do this? I'm gonna take my steel ruler. I'm gonna measure from there and I need to be less than an inch. What I'm gonna do is come in here and lay up my ruler on here and I'm going to count nine divisions. So right here's the ninth division. I'm going to come in here and scratch me a line so I can see that. And that's where I'm going to take and cut that. Now when we cut this, we're going to cut it on this machine over here. I'm going to put this little filler block that is thinner than the bolt underneath so that we can clamp on this because I got the head of the bolt to worry about. So it's going to be raised up just a little bit, but we're going to keep our cut square by putting this in here in the machine and then clamping in this direction right here. So we're not going to clamp on this piece. This is nothing more than just an offset so we can hold the fastener down so we don't cut it off in an angle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put the little piece inside the vise where it doesn't stick out where it's going to get cut. I've got my mark on my bolt where I want it cut. I'm going to come in here and I can't hold this down and close it because my thumb is in there. So I'm going to have to just kind of push this rod up real careful and then hold the fastener where it's going to be pushing down parallel onto that support underneath. I'm going to line it up with the blade so I know I'm going to cut there. And I have that done and then I'm going to push down. That really holds tight and that is mechanically held really, really tight. What we need to do now is move the blade up closer. On this machine, we have an emergency stop up top. Anything happens, just hit that or you can hit this red button here. This joystick, if we push it forward or backwards, it's going to move, if I push it up, it's going to move the part closer to the blade. It is a variable pitch, and how we push that, it will go faster or slower. If I pull it down this way, it will pull the part away from the blade. So I'm going to pull that up closer to my part without making contact there, and we're going to slow it down, and I'm about an eighth of an inch away from the part. That's all I want to be at this point. On this machine, it has methods. All you ever have to do is hit escape, escape. You can go to cutting methods and just push down on this button, not down on this one, but you push down, it will select that. We're gonna use cutting method A, that's gonna control the RPM, the feed rate, the self-feeds cut, everything for us. It's gonna put coolant on there. It's gonna keep the bolt cool and not change the microstructure of the metal. So the next thing we need to do is just go ahead and close this. It will have safety lock and you won't be able to open it. Just come in here and hit the green button. It's now putting coolant out on the blade. It's gonna ramp up the speed and it's gonna cut that bolt. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just sit there and watch, and as soon as it cuts the bolt, you're gonna be able to hit the red button here and stop it. Okay, I can hear it's done. I'm gonna hit stop. When it stops, it clicks and it unlocks the door, and I'm gonna be able to open that up. Now at this point, very carefully reach in there and get your fastener out that's been cut, and you can measure it and see that I am less than an inch, I'm about 950. So that's gonna be perfect for what I want right there in terms of shearing. Now I'm gonna deburr that up here in a minute. The next thing we need to do while we have that fastener in there is I'm gonna go ahead and move the blade out of the way and get where I can get back in here is I need to come in and cut a sample for hardness test. There's not a lot there guys. So what I'm gonna do is cut it just right here past the thread so I can have about an eighth inch piece. Some of the fasteners will have more depending on the diameter. The quarter inch really doesn't have a lot for you. Actually, at this point, you can take the shim out. You can take the shim out, put your fastener in there, and I'm gonna get it where I can come in here and push this in, lock it, and I'm gonna cut me a little piece for the hardness test on that. So I'm gonna bring the blade back up. Right there, close the door and we're gonna cut that little piece off. So I can tell it's cut, I'm gonna hit stop, it's unlocked. I'm gonna pull this off. Now becomes the fun part, where did my part go? First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece out. Now to keep you from hitting the blade, we have this nice little magnet right here. And if I go in there, I can see my part and I can now get my part out. This is what I'm gonna use to take my hardness test on and you can tell it's not very big 
And so I'm only going to get one or two spots because I'm probably going to have to take it on this side right here. I'm probably going to get one, maybe two measurements on hardness on that, taking it across the pieces that we cut there. So keep that and the fastener in terms of this has three lines. This is a grade five bolt. You're going to do this for all your fasteners. We just cut our two pieces and what I'm going to use is this flat paper here. And I'm just going to kind of deburr my part using that. Okay. If I roll it a little bit as I go across there, that's going to be enough to remove that burr on that part. So this is deburred. Next thing I need to do is deburr this little piece that we have. And I find to get it flat for the hardness tester, because we need two flat parallel surfaces, is to grind it flat, make sure that's off. What you're going to do is come in here and do the other surface as well. And those are going to be nice flat parallel surfaces. Again, I may want to kind of knock the burr off at a little bit of an angle. One of the things I can do with this is take this maroon pad and come in here and just kind of clean the part up. The nice thing is that saw cuts pretty burr free and we're not going to have a lot of big nasty burrs. But I want to make sure that this is nice and clean and flat to sit down on the anvil of the machine and I can come in there and take my hardness values. And this is deburred so it'll fit in the fixture. It's the right length. We're ready to go test. So we're at the hardness tester and I have a piece of each sample I've taken. And what you're going to do is come in here and take a hardness value. You may only get two in the center. So you're going to put the OD where the OD is round like the anvil, you're going to slide that up in there and take your hardnesses. Now on the number two bolt, you can go with the B scale. So you're going to have to put the B indenter and change the unit around by changing your hardness value to B. And then you're going to have to come in here and change your weights to 100 kilograms. So I'm just going to come in here and let everything set up so that I know the next measurement is going to be a good measurement. Okay, we're at the Shimatsu and this is where we're going to be doing our testing on the shear test. Now this is the fixture we're going to use so be careful handling this because this will slide out and go awry on you real quick. We're going to take our bolt, put it in here and we're going to find the hole that corresponds to the correct size. So what am I talking about? I had it in the wrong size hole. I want to flip this around. I'm using this quarter inch hole. I want it to be in that hole. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to put my bolt in there. And I'm going to find that hole and my bolt is now fit into there. It's only in single shear right here. Now we're ready to put it down into the machine. And what we're going to do is centrally locate it between the machine such that we're going to push down on this piece with the platen. Yes, it pivots, but it will push flat and it's going to shear that between the two surfaces. And there's a hand jog feature right here. We can push down. We're not going to hit anything over there and that goes slow. If I hit hand jog, I'm going to show you grazing up. You can see it moves up real fast. So what I want to do is come in here and move this down till I can get the part next to the fixture that we have. We're going to jog this down to where it's almost touching the, this portion of the fixture. Now if you raise it way up, you're going to find out that in the profile we have the machine locked out to just half inch increments so that we don't crash the machine. So you're going to have to reset and re-jog. So what I'm going to do is come back in here and I'm going to jog this down to the point right there and I have now then when we first get to this machine what we need to do is talk a little bit about our screen here that we have and what we have are some folders up here that you can save data in so here's one for class you for 1224 uh, so let's talk about the computer screen here if you want to capture the images, we have a snipping capture tool and you can save those files in the folder for Engineering Sciences 2141 because you're doing the shear testing in this lab. We have a program called Trampezium. I'm going to open Trampezium and it's going to want a password and our password for this is user and user. This is going to bring up Trampezium. Now in Trampezium we have a program called a method. And we're going to go down to methods and we're going to look down here and we're going to look for the one that we want. We're looking for bolt shear inch. We're going to open that up. I'm just going to hit finish and this is going to set all the machine parameters we need for this operation. Now if it's the first time when we turn it on in the morning, we have to calibrate things. So we're going to come in here and calibrate. You don't need to calibrate every single test. We'll do the calibration for you and what that's doing is calibrating the load cell up there so that it is zeroed out. Kind of like what you guys did on the strain gauges where you have to balance and tear out the strain gauges. And that's what it's doing. That's basically just a load cell 
that you saw in module A, week two. So at this point, we've loaded our part into the machine. I don't have a load on the force. I can come in here and say zero. Don't do a calibration. You're just right clicking on these areas and zeroing them out. That zero is our stroke so that we're gonna move down a half an inch and that fastener should fail in a half inch of stroke. So we're ready now to come in here and we have to lower the door. We have to make sure the controller hand jog is turned off. And now if I come in here and start the test, it's gonna start the test. And I can see it loading here. So we've probably had a linear portion here, hit our yield, and now we're headed towards our UTS on this in shear. Now we can see it failing. And we just heard it break, and it captures our max value for that fastener. Now then, if you want to write that value down, if you double click on this and make it go large, it will tell you over here, if I make the screen go full screen, it will tell me the max force that point so I don't have to truly read it off the graph. I can record that and put that in my lab report. So we're going to go into the machine. We can open the door now and we should be able to pull our part out of here. And so if I look at this carefully, I want to pull this up. I'm going to let the part fall out there. So I captured a piece of the part right there and my other half is going to come here. Put the fixture up over on the table and I can look at this and I can see the fractured surface that I have. At this point, we have the value, the max force that it took to break this, and we can go capture the image of this. Okay, guys, we are now going to look at the image of our failed surface on the microscope. And I've secured my sample into this block that we 3D printed so that its surface is at the top, the same plane as the top of that green block. That's going to keep us from having to refocus this microscope. You're going to have to move it around. You're going to see its magnification is really high and it's hard to get everything in the right viewport as well as focused. Over here we have an intensity deal light bulb that we can in, turn it up or down. We've got our fine focus, coarse focus, and we're going to leave it at 6.3 on the magnification. We have our camera up here and it's going to go to the computer. We're logged in as Endeavor student, ask the TA for help and we'll get you the password and log in. This doesn't have internet access, so you're gonna save your files under Engineering Science 2141, and you can create folders for your groups. I recommend doing that. You can capture it to a flash drive from there, but this way, if you lose your flash drive, you've got them backed up. So we're gonna open up NIS, and again, the camera's on with the green light, or it'll give you a driver error problem. And once we're in here, we're gonna go up here and hit this little green arrow for acquire. Okay, and basically that's turning on the camera. So at this point, I've already got my image focused and in the field of view here. I can see my rubber band holding it against the V and the, the, the tooling block, and that's fine. So what I'm gonna be able to do now is come in here and take measurements. I would like to have a scale on this, and right here we have a show scale. If I select that, since I have 6.3 highlighted here, it's gonna show me, and it'll put on my image, that this line is a thousand micrometers. If I want to take a direct measurement, let's say I want to measure from here to here, I can come over here and do measurements, click that, and go from here to here, and it shows me the length in micrometers. So I can take measurements if I want. So now if I want to capture that to the system, I just hit enter, and that is now on there, and I have my scale. I can save this, and so I can say file, save as, and it's going to save it as a JPEG and I can send it to my folder and put on there whatever the file name that I want to have. And so I'm going to call this demo and I can say save. Now in the file name I want to put on there probably the bolt that I have grade 2, 5, or 8 so that it's going to be part of that file name. And so if I go to that folder to wherever my directory is going to be, I now have an image with my measurement and my scale on there that I can use for further analysis.